Hello everybody and welcome back down the creek. So for today's video we're going to be fixing the bunks on my Shorelander trailer for my 16 and a half foot Alumacraft. I found out the other day that the, one of the bunks is broken, they're in bad shape, the carpet's torn, so I got all the stuff I need to replace it. So I've never done this before but it looks pretty simple, uh, self-explanatory, so I'm going to show you guys how I do it in case you want to try and do this yourself. So I'll make sure that I try and link all the tools that I use in the bottom and the description as long as well as like the carpet that I use and so on and so forth. Also make sure you check out my recommended products in the link below as well. So let's get into the video. step which is what I've already done and I did not film because I did it at the boat ramp uh, the day I found that was broken as I've measured the bunks to figure out what size I needed my bunks measured out at nine foot six inches so I looked online for pre-made bunks and I found that they usually stop at about eight foot so I didn't find the sizes I needed so I decided to make it so once you get it measured and you figure out you got to get your materials together and we'll go through the material list as we go. So what I got is I have two treated pressure treated two by fours that are 12 foot long. I went with the 12 foot long because my guide bunks are two foot long, so I wanted enough material left over to do those as well. I'm going to try and do all four, but we'll see how much carpet we have left. I might need to buy another roll of carpet before I do the sides, but the primary ones I'm worried about are the bottom because the bottom ones are broken. So step one, we're going to cut the 2x4, and we're going to measure it out 9 foot 6. So for this step, you're going to need a couple of things. For this step, I'm going to use a pencil, a tape measure, and a speed square. Now, you can get away with something other than a speed square. More or less, you just need a straight edge. But a speed square is super handy when you're cutting straight lines on 2x4s and stuff. Uh, and they're not that expensive. You can find plastic ones at Harbor Freight real cheap. But I'll put links in the description for tape measure and speed square. And then a pencil you can get anywhere. So let's measure this out. So I'm going to stick the uh, end of tape measure here on the end. Take my speed square, take my tape measure, and run it all the way down the board to about here. On the tape measure, I'm going to find my 9 foot 6, which is right here. I'm going to stick the speed square there, and I'm going to draw my line. So I'm going to mark the board on the front all the way across, right at 9 foot 6. Now the speed square is in place, so I don't need the tape measure there. So step one is complete on this. We're going to go on to the next step. Okay, so the next step is going to be cutting this board. You're going to need some sort of saw to do this. It can be a hand saw if you want to go to town with it. It can also be a circular saw or a miter saw, whichever is best for you. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug the saw in. I'm going to put my safety glasses on. Make sure you use safety glasses so you don't get stuff in your eyes. And I'm going to cut on the line that we made. Okay, so I'm set up to cut now, but first thing I'm going to do is check my measurement. Make sure I'm 9 foot 6, which I am. You always want to check your measurement, measure twice, cut once. I know it's kind of like an old adage, but it's true. You don't want to make that mistake. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this and make sure that everything's out of the way so I'm not going to damage anything while I cut it. I'm going to put my safety glasses on. My saw is plugged in. And I also recommend hearing protection because this gets kind of loud, especially if you're not around saws all the time. So what we'll do is we'll line the saw up to cut. There's a little gauge here on the saw. And then 
trick of the trade, you can use your speed square to make sure that you get a straight cut. So let's give her a cut. That's a good cut, nice and clean. And we're gonna save this piece right here because we're gonna use this to make our, our guides. Okay, for my next step, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up the edges or the ends where it's been cut because I don't want sharp edges to mess with the carpeting. So I just got a wet dry aluminum oxide waterproof abrasive paper. It's just something that I had here that I got I don't know, from a grass cell or something. So we're going to sand it up. And I'm just basically going to rub it on the end here to get it around. It doesn't have to be pretty. You just don't want sharp edges. So I'm going to get that done and I'll be right back. So if you can see the difference there, there's one that I sanded, rounded, and there's the one that I didn't, sharp. So you're just taking these edges and rounding them over on the ends. These edges right here, rounding them over. Okay, so now we're going to be wrapping the bunk with carpet. And the carpet I'm using is Atwood's Trailer Bunk Padding. Um, it's designed for bunks, and uh, Atwood is a good name. So the link for that will be in the description below. Also, you're going to need a staple gun. I'm going to be using an air-operated 18-gauge stapler with 18-gauge, uh, quarter stainless steel staples. If you don't have an air system or a air stapler, you can use one of these by them at your hardware stop. Or I'll put a link in the description for one of these as well with T50 stainless steel staples. I'll put a link for everything in the description. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay, I got the board here. I'm going to lay out my carpeting. I'm also going to be using a razor knife to cut the carpeting. So I'm going to get it kind of laid out figure out the length I want so I can tuck the ends up and uh, we'll get this carpet part going. Okay, so I laid this out directly in the center of the carpeting and I gave myself two and a half inches of overhang on each end. So two and a half inches of overhang right here. And then I measured it out, it's equal on each end. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold up each end. I'm going to just go down the board like this, pull it tight, and staple it with the staple gun. So let's get that done. So I got the staple gun loaded with my stainless steel staples. So it got a little tight at the end, 
I got a second set of hands to help me out, help me pull. Um, the board kind of dipped, and I'm not super happy with it, but at this point it is what it is. So I left the center and the, the board bare so that it allows for water to drain out of the wood and the wood to dry. So let's talk about the ends. Now, to get the ends to be neat, I have the ends like this. To get them to be neat, I'm going to go from this corner in here, poke the knife through, and just draw it straight. Same for this corner here. Poke the knife through and draw it straight. And then this top corner as well. Poke the knife through and draw it straight. And this corner as well. Poke the knife through. Right there. And draw it straight. Then I'll cut this flush here on the top. And I'll cut a little bit off of this edge. And a hair off this edge. Alright, and then this goes like this. This goes like this, and then this goes like this, and then it's a nice clean end for your bunk. So what we're going to do is draw this corner over like so, staple, and then this corner, staple, 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 and then the flap up. And there you have it, a nice clean bunk end. So one of my staples hit something, went a little crazy right here, and it's sticking out. So I'll take my hammer, find the piece, seat it in there. There you go, nice clean bunk end. I'll do the same to the other side. Now the hard part, I gotta get them on the trailer. So I'm gonna take the boat, launch the boat in the creek, and bring the boat, have Kelly bring the boat to the house, and then bring the trailer back to the yard. If you don't have water like I have, you're probably gonna have to launch the boat and do the next part at the launch. So that might suck a little bit. But uh, we'll get the boat launched and get the trailer squared away and uh, we'll pick it back up. All right, so now all we gotta do is take the old bunks off and put the new bunks on. It looks like two Phillips in the front and we're gonna cut the old carpet off to see how they have the the backside on. So let's get to it. So the problem that we were having is the mounts in the back were designed to fit directly on the 2x4 without the carpet. So just kind of pounded on it a little bit to open up the gap to allow it to fit over the carpet snug.
We completed the first side and Kelly decided to help us with the second one. But at this point we kind of had to figure out where we went wrong on the first one so the second one definitely went easier. We took the mounts off the trailer in order to better fasten them to the board or put them straighter and allow us to line it up a little easier. Um, it was a pretty tight fit with the carpeting over the mounts. On the second board I decided to open it up a little bit farther. So I beat on them a little harder and it helped out and went a little easier the second time around. Well guys, that job really wasn't that hard to do. So I did end up getting the help of my uncle. Um, it helped big time having a second person, especially with stretching the carpet around um, the first bunk that I did, the way I lined it up, I did one side then the other. The second bunk, I did both sides as I walked down the board and that definitely is the way to go. So start at one end and do both sides as you move down the board so that you can get it evenly. Um, the first board, the one end is a little short, but hey, it's my first time, it was a learning experience, but I got it done. And then mounting it to the trailer, they were held on the mounts by just regular old screws. I'm not sure if they were galvanized or not, but I just used the original screws that came out. I put them back in. They were in okay shape, a little bit of rust, but uh, none of them broke. So that's a good thing. I pre-drilled the holes and I had to bend the mounts out a little bit. In order to access the screws, we had to cut away the carpet. So when those were wrapped... Uh, the mounts were on and then the back two mounts were wrapped in carpet so i didn't do it that way i already carpeted them so i just put them in the vise gave them a tap and opened them up some just so i could get them around so all in all it was uh not too hard to do and i definitely could do this again if i had to materials cost me right around a hundred dollars for both lengths of carpet the 2x4s were $37 for both, but lumber is super expensive right now, so that is ridiculous. That should have cost me about 10 bucks, but it is what it is. It needed to be done. I'm going on a trip soon, uh, actually in a, in a month, so I wanted to get that done before I left. Other than that, I'll make sure that I link all the tools that I used and alternative tools, whatever you need to get this job done, as well as the carpeting. Um, everything but the 2x4s pretty much because the 2x4s you just have to go to like Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever your lumber yard is and get treated 2x4s. I got extreme weather treated 2x4s and that's going to hopefully do the job. Um, when I put the boat back on, you know, I left a space between each piece of carpet with some exposed wood at the bottom and that's so the water can get out and drain and the 2x4 can dry. That will hopefully extend the life. Now, I have enough 2x4 left from each board to do the side runners, but I didn't have enough carpet. So I'm going to have to order some more carpet to do those. We'll see. Maybe I'll do a video on those two. Well, guys, that's pretty much it for today. Make sure you check out the description and check out the links for all the materials as well as my recommended products. Um, anytime you go on a link, uh, it gives us a little bit of a kickback with no extra expense to you, and it helps out the channel, you know, making content and fishing can be expensive. Uh, this kind of helps offset the cost and the time that goes into it. So I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys are able to use this. And remember guys, get out and live. Catch you next time here at On The Creek.